Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to write conditionals in Jinja templates. So what do I mean by writing conditionals? Now uh, you can see that whenever I click on the next question, we're going to go to next question and next question and next question. There comes a time that we are at the end of our questions. So what do you uh, wolves use their scent for? is our last question and when the user clicks on it the user is going to see an error that is not a good thing right i mean we can do better right so what i'm going to do is instead of whenever we are on the last question instead of showing to the user next question i'm just going to show to the user start over so the user knows the current question is the last question so there isn't that error at all uh, we have uh, provided ways to handle it, but we are going to make sure that we never want to handle it again. So what I'm going to do is uh, this next question, I'm going to keep this link right here so you know where we have come from. And I'm going to keep the link for the home. And within here, within the HTML page, I'm going to try to provide... Um, conditionals in templates what does that mean it means that we are going to grab a regular HTML template and we are going to add logic to it something that it never had I mean we did add logic here as well but conditionals they are like true logic right so I'm going to create a button which is going to be our container I'm going to create a set of curly braces there an anchor tag or an anchor element a set of curly braces there and an anchor element and then again a set of curly braces and I'm going to explain what this actually means so within here uh, whenever you are working with uh, conditionals in Jinja the conditionals syntax in Jinja is something like this so this is a syntax this is the the syntax for conditionals so you're gonna have a pair of curly braces and a pair of percentage signs so I'm just gonna copy that and I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna put it here now again uh, and um, when you when you want to write conditionals you need to start the condition and you need to end the condition as well so every condition is going to have an if statement if there is a second condition you're going to have an else statement if there is an if there isn't any other condition you need to terminate that if statement so let's first think about this and why i've provided three here so how many conditions do we have in here so the first condition is that whenever the user clicks on the next question the user has to go to the next question in the database the second question is what if the next question is the last question then there is no next question so we want to show the user to start over so basically how many conditions do we have we have two the first one is going to be responsible for going to the next question the second condition is going to be responsible for starting over the cycle so i'm going to say um, next question and in this one I'm gonna say start over so what do we want to write in here the syntax basically is the same as the Python that we have so we are gonna say if index is less than the max index that we have then what do we want to do what is the max index the max index is the index of the last item within our database so without moving further let's come in here so how many items do we have in our database we have one two three four five six uh seven and eight so we have eight items in our database right what is the last items index it is seven because the last item index is the length of our database minus one because the indices start from zero so the first item has an index of zero one two three four and then we have uh, five 
then this is 6, and then this is 7. So technically, the length, the max index has to be the length minus 1, right? And we know how we can do that. We have actually done something like that before. So in here, I'm going to create a max index variable. And this variable is actually a Jinja variable. Where have we referenced this? We have referenced this right here. So what is the value for the max index? It is a keyword argument. What is the value? It is the length of the database that we have minus one. Very simple. Why minus one? Because this represents the last index. The last index is the number. So we have eight items, eight minus one, seven. Seven is the last index. That's why we say length of the database minus one. I just explained it. I'm not going to go over it and again. Let's save this. Perfect so far, right? I'm going to come here so we know. So if index is less than the max index, it means that there is still a next question. That's why we are going to show to the user a next question. But what is going to be the href? What should I write inside the href? I'm going to ask you to pause the video and think about it. Think of this as a challenge. What should be the href for the next question? And I'm going to give you three seconds and you're going to see my solution after three seconds. All right. I'm sure you did that great. So we are going to create a Jinja variable. And I'm going to use URL4. Now in here, we are going to do exactly the same thing that we did in here. Because we are talking about the next question, right? So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to put it right here. And I'm sure you got that right. So now when you click on it, for as long as the index is less than the max index, you're going to see the anchor tag show next question. But what if the index is equal to the max index or greater it's not going to be greater than that but what if it is equal to max index in the case of this database max index is seven what if the current index well, you can see in the url address bar here in the browser which i've highlighted it is seven so max index is seven if index equals ma uh, max index that is going to be the job of our else statement so else statement. What do you want to do in that case? In that case, I don't want to show the next question text. I want to show the start over text. But what is going to be the href? Go ahead, pause the video, and try it. I'm sure you're going to do great. I'm just going to give you a hint. So when it is start over and you click on the start over, you're going to go to the, ne to the first question. And keep in mind, what is the index of the first question? And now I'm sure you can solve it. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. This is your second exercise. All right. I'm sure you did great. Let's go ahead and try it. Um, and so what is the uh, view function that I'm trying to access? It's always going to be the questions. Questions uh, underscore view. But the tricky part was not this. The tricky part is what was the index? So whenever it is start over and when you click on it, you go to the first question. What is the index of the first question? Zero. Perfect. That's it. Very simple. And at the end, you need to end or terminate your uh, statement or conditional. So I'm just going to say and if. Let's save that. Let's save this part as well. Let's run it. So now you can see we are on the last item and automatically it says start over. So everything is working correctly. So I'm going to start from the first case. Now you can see because this is a button, it has a different styling than an anchor tag. So if I come in here, you can see now we are inside a button. And what do we have? We just have a next question. So if I click on it, we should go to the question with an index of two. There we go question uh, here it is question with an index of two click on it question with an index of three click on it four you can see that at any time we just have one anchor tag within this button click on it click on it six and the final question is going to be the question which has um, 
um, the which has which is the question with an index of seven. So if I click on that, this is the question which uh, this is the uh, question number seven. This is the number of the questions. So if I click on it again, you can see that we are. If you click on it, you're going to go to this question. So this anchor tag is going to show the next questions URL that you're going to access. So if you click on the start over, where is it going to go? It's going to go to question slash zero. And if I click on it, we should go to that cross-eyed cat thing. There we go. It says next question. So in no case, you're going to end up, as long as you're just clicking this, you're not going to end up with a uh, with a 404 error. This, I think, is a better uh, approach than that one. And I'm just going to click on Home. Uh, and you can see that we don't have any questions in the Home, so there is no way for us to uh, do that as well. We're going to do that throughout our next lectures. Don't worry about it. And uh, that's it for this lecture. See you in the next one.